بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله continuing on in our study of nasiha or advice to ahl sunnah we reached the fourth point in the treaties where the sheikh said it is an extremely it is extremely important especially for the students of knowledge who are involved with giving da'wah that they make a distinction between mudarat and mudahana uh, the former pertains to leniency and gentleness in your approach towards people, which is highly recommended. It was mentioned in Lisan al-Arab, Mudarat means to be lenient and friendly with people to keep them from feeling uncomfortable and thus running away from you. So this is a part of Hikmah in giving da'wah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, Mudahina is criticized and contemptible due to the fact that it is specifically related to the religion, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <clears throat> they wish that you should compromise your religion out of sympathy for them so that they could compromise their religion with you. Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala explained this verse by saying, they desire for you to compromise your religion so they could compromise their religion, so the mudari, <clears throat> is lenient in his dealings with people without renouncing or compromising anything from his religion. But the mudahin strives to get close to people by compromising his religion. The Messenger وسلم, had the most excellent character and was the most merciful of this ummah towards people, which exemplifies the point of gentleness and leniency being from his menhaj, his methodology. What's important here, habitifillah, is understanding the difference between those terms and knowing <clears throat> which has a a, a, a a place in da'wah and which does not. So mudarat or mudara, <clears throat> this is to, you know, being gentle and coming to the people in a way in order that they would be, ex they would accept, okay, that they would have acceptance of what you have to say. You know, and that goes back to the less, last lesson we said that we had, and we talked about, uh, you know, the the gentleness uh, and leniency in da'wah, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that being the foundation, how we should begin our da'wah. <clears throat> and that, uh, so mudarat means to be lenient and friendly with people. But the mudahana goes against correct da'wah, because that is compromising religious beliefs and relig and the methodology, for the methodology of the Salaf and the methodology of the NBA in order to gain some, uh, some uh, it could be a worldly objective or it could be even a religious ob objective, but the methodology is incorrect. So it, it requires compromise. And the best example that I can illustrate as a minhaj, the methodology that you see that that is from the usul of their their <clears throat> methodology is that of Jamaat al khwan al-Muslimin. That they will do everything to even some of them, uh, you know, wishing New Year's and uh, perhaps even, you know, Christmas and, and other festivals of, of non-Muslims and you know for this and with the claim and with the aim perhaps of dawah so for them they can compromise they feel that it's necessary to compromise and cloak the dawah in a different way perhaps in a way where even you compromise principles of the dawah in order to gain a sharia based objective and we we studied in our class about uh Qa'id uh, Fiqiyya, we said that one of the principles is al-wasail laha ahkam al-maqasid that the means to something takes the uh, takes the same ruling as that which you intended. So that doesn't mean so, th so then therefore if you have a means that is compromised even if you have a higher objective that is not in conformity with Islam. You cannot compromise and say, yeah, okay, I'll go to church with you today if you go to the masjid with me tomorrow. Okay, you can't do that because now you've compromised something 
from the foundation of Islam by going to that church, perhaps saying, you know, I'll take a day to worship with you and you come and worship with me. And hopefully that'll make you uh, inclined towards Islam. No, you can't, you can't do it. That is extreme <clears throat> mudahina, you know, to compromise principles of the religion in order to some objective, whether that be a Sharia based objective or whether that be a dunya, a worldly objective, but it is a, it means to compromise the deen, which is unacceptable. The Sheikh then said he was also the strongest and the most firm in upholding the religion of Allah, and he would not abandon or compromise anything from it, no matter who they were. And this exemplifies the point of holding tightly to the religion without compromise and also nullifies practice of mudahana. Meaning he's talking about the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not use that as a form of da'wah. Whereas you find, as I mentioned, the example of Akhwan Muslimin, they are willing to compromise, uh, you know, even for, for a political, they'll make political compromises in order to be a means in order to uh, implement a sharia, for example. So we don't doubt that Akhwan Muslimin, that that is their goal. However, their means, their methodology for doing so, they will do anything, you know, whether parliament, parliamentary elections, they'll take any kind of means in order to get there and they are willing to compromise the deen because they feel that it's a better, it's a greater objective. And that principle might work outside of Islam for many movements and so on and so forth. But in Islam, that's not permissible because you, you're talking about your hereafter. You're talking about haq and batil, truth and falsehood. You're talking about uh, jannah wa nar. You're talking about, uh, you know, your obedience to Allah and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is impermissible for you to make those compromises uh, <clears throat> in your religion in order to, uh, even if you believe that you have a greater uh, goal uh, and, and a greater Sharia based goal even and even you find this you find this really in fact in a lot of the movements even in uh, with um, with Jamaat Tablik for example think about they in their six pillars you will never find and this is one of the criticisms Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i Allah yarhamuhu, yarhamuhu, uh, had regarding this Jamaat he said that you'll find from amongst them those who have been making khuruj for 30, 40 years and still committing shirk. Because they, because the beliefs, getting the tarbiyah of your aqidah is not the primary focus for them. Their primary focus and what they call people to is just the salat, is the prayer. And they don't emphasize necessarily seeking knowledge, although they do have madaris, you know, they do with the deal bundis having the, the various uh, madaris, uh, dar al -um. But again, even look at that at their curriculum as we we made a video separate about that about talking about their curriculum and how it's a compromise of Tawheed they, they study philosophy and things like this yes they're studying the books of Hadith but they're studying philosophy and other things and not even studying where their class is on Tawheed and when you look at Jamaat Tablik how do you see that compromise why why am I bringing this up because what is their first pillar their first pillar is Ikhlas is sincerity what does sincerity mean for them? Does it mean sincerity and calling to uh, the Lordship of Allah and the Ibadah, Tawheed al-Ibadah? Or is it just the Lordship of Allah? Think about any time you've heard Jamaat al -Tablik stand up, uh, members from their, their uh, organization and their movement. And you'll see the Ajhal al-Nas, you'll see some of the sometimes new Muslims who can't speak and articulate even in English and then they're even, uh, you know, getting up in front of the, and addressing the congregation and they surely can't articulate religion, religious principles because they haven't studied it. And I've seen some of the most embarrassing things take place because they want everyone just to be a participant. My dear respected brothers, please stay after the Salat. We're going to have a quick ban or we're going to have this, we're going to have that. And then they'll have someone who more than likely hasn't studied anything of Islam start speaking about Islam. And even when they are a learned, somewhat learned person, they'll just tell you about Tawheed al They only tell you about the Lordship of Allah. But the Christians will tell you about the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too. And the Jews and other 
religions that are that claim to be monotheistic, they will also tell you about the lordship of Allah, because that's something where we generally agree. That law, if you ask a, a Christian who created the heavens and the earth, they'll say God. You know, most likely they'll return to God. Some of them will, will say Jesus, but generally they'll give the rububiya, the lordship, to God. And they may mean by God Jesus, but the point is, is they will call to rububiya, as Jamaat al calls to rububiya. But they won't go beyond that because they feel that calling to Tawheed al and the other aspects of Tawheed, Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat, that this is too controversial. This will divide the Muslims because there's so many amongst the Muslim community that are still on shirk. If you go to many of the places, especially in the subcontinent of India and Pakistan and places like this and Bangladesh and other places, you have major shirk going on in the Muslim lands. You know, it's very common that you'll find that they share commonalities with Hindus and, and others, that there isn't much distinguish in their culture. In fact, the other day in the gym, I was speaking with uh, a brother from India. And from Kerala, two people from Kerala, two of the trainers, one he's Christian and one is a Muslim. And I said, uh, you were talking about the issue of marriage. And he mentioned, he said, yes. And he said, in our culture, the women, they pay the dowry. I said, wow. I said, as a Muslim, even I said, yeah, even the, the Muslim. So it shows that, of course, this is probably not the case in all situations, not people who are learned and not uh, so on and so forth. But it shows that the, the people cooperate and they they inculcate the values and the belief system and the jurisprudence even the rulings that the other communities take and the prophet said meant to shabba be common for women whoever resembles a people he is from them so this is all compromise and this is all a part of mudahana this is all a part of compromising the religious principles for whatever objective wallah musta'an the Sheikh then mentions, <clears throat> he said, it is necessary for the student of knowledge to recognize and carefully consider the difference between these two affairs. For there are some people who may consider being lenient and gentle with people a sign of weakness in his deen, as we mentioned, uh, and a form of tamir. Look at the Sheikh was talking about this. This is 2003 when he wrote this. So he's talking about that fitna of everybody rushing to claim someone is tamir, that he's mumayya, because, just because he's gentle. Because he's gentle with, with non-Muslim communities and he's gentle with other Muslims and calling them to the sunnah. But in fact, we find, and you'll find the biggest iqbal, the bis, biggest acceptance, if you want acceptance, look at the backlash because people were pushing that dawah and pushing being harsh and stern, thinking people were going to become Salafi. Look at the, the fitna that caused with non-Salafis and even split and divided Salafi communities. Because everyone's rushing to be harsh and 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 thinking that that is what is pleasing to Allah he said on the other hand there may be a group that considers being gentle and lenient with people to mean that you condone their batil and that you are being silent concerning their mistakes and in all honesty both of those paths are incorrect so here the shaykh is making clear no matter how many people criticize his risala and say he's mumayya and say it contains this, it contains this, but how many ulama wrote off on this uh, treatise? He, he makes it very clear in here, and you just wonder, did the people read what he had to say, or it was just too much? He didn't, you know, some people can't accept too much statements about gentleness. It kind of hurts them almost, you know. They need sternness. They want that. They only want those athar that say sternness with ahl bid'a, you know, as if everything is black and white, but it's not. All these things, and we're going to talk about some of those things as we get later in the treaties, you know, that these things, these are masail faqiyya. These are some masail ijtihadiyya and faqiyya and masail that takes fiqh and understanding of the religion and it takes going back to those principles if we're honest with ourselves. So he says, so pay attention to this matter for it is very dangerous and resemble and resembles treading on slippery ground that none will be saved from except he whom Allah has given success, guidance, and direction. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad.